as entrepreneurs, we all have challenges. The biggest challenge is to go out and serve our current clients and our future clients and build great enterprises that deliver tremendous value. Well, I have a special guest today. He's like many of us. He started out as an extremely talented individual. I like to refer to us uh, entrepreneurs as technicians. We, we have a great skill, whether it's building widgets, whether it's professional services or in the healthcare industry. And so many of us just stop there, though, and we're, we're, we could be solopreneurs or we get inside large organizations. And I've asked uh, Pat to join us because he has done something that very few people in the healthcare industry have done, is not only is he a great technician, but he's built an enterprise around helping not only the patients, but his fellow practitioners, the other physicians, to come together and build an organization. And this is a huge opportunity for all of us as an entrepreneur, is how can we make it easy to attract not only great clients or great patients, but great talent. So you're going to want to stay tuned. You're going to be amazed with this remarkable individual and some huge lessons you're going to learn. Ordinary success? No way. You want amazing, remarkable, exceptional breakthroughs. Dig deep. Think bold. Drive hard. Watch yourself soar beyond your dreams. AESNation.com. Pat Doe, I really appreciate you joining me today. You know, it's the end of the day. We're recording this, and uh, you've made yourself available. You're an extremely successful entrepreneur, uh, orthopedic surgeon. You built a you know very successful practice, and I want to get into it. And, and one of the reasons I reached out to you, Pat, is uh, we're both in strategic coaching. When I was talking with Dan. Sullivan, who's the founder and both of our coaches, I go, Dan, who's really one of those super successful entrepreneurs who, you know, I haven't heard of? And he goes, Pat, he's right over there. Go talk with him right away. <laughs> and and uh, Pat, so first of all, thank you for making time for us. Thanks for having me out. I, I'm joining this, John. Well, you know, you, you know, an orthopedic surgeon, you've built a very successful practice and you've got a great culture. And I think it resonates, you know, as I've gotten to know you now, you know, with other professionals, what they can do. But I, I want to get to know you a little bit more. So let's go. And, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking you thought of yourself, you know, as little Pat, as this big entrepreneur making a huge difference in the medical industry. How did this all come about? Well, uh, little Pat got done with his residency or training, if you will, John, in, in 2000. I actually grew up in Southern California. I was going to go back there and start up a practice. And when you got out back then, I, I thought I'd go learn how to run a little practice for a few years. What happened is that I really enjoyed having my own practice. I thought we can practice medicine differently. So whereas we started out, I started out running at a small practice. I, I, I really enjoyed it and thought we can do a good job and take business concepts into medicine and take long wait times where people would wait long times in the clinic room and doctors would make you wait for an hour and it was okay. We, I want to change all that to hospitality, do a four seasons type service for our patients and then grow it. So what grew out of me wanting to just give good service, have a small practice, I didn't dream where we would be where we're at today because the it's funny how just taking care of folks properly uh, can help you succeed. Well, yeah, I, I want to take a step back because, I mean, you know, if there are all of us, you know, I, I'm 59, and as you get the age, we get to spend more time than we like with the healthcare industry along the way. And, uh, you know, and the, the challenge, Pat, and, and as I was listening to you, I mean, you know, I don't think of the healthcare industry in the four season together very often. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, so, so much of it, you know, is not that, and certainly not mainstream. I mean, we got some of the high-end concierge groups and so on, and I, I'm in one of those only because I was worried about getting access. And, but, you know, there's just, a, there's just an opportunity to revolutionize or transform, certainly, and you're one of the guys leading the charge of doing it. And I, I'd like to, 
you know, kind of, you started out in a small practice, you started getting market feedback from your patients, you're serving them well. Well, you've grown well past that small practice. I mean, kind of give us a flavor of where you are now, and then I want to go into lessons learned. So in 2000, uh, I took out a $160,000 loan, had four employees, and were in multiple hats, as any entrepreneur does early on. And sitting here today, we have four practice locations. We're the busiest practice in our area. We have MRI at all our locations, surgery centers. We do athletic training for a lot of the sports teams, high schools. Uh, we have physical therapy, medications. Now we are about 150 employees or so doing, um, I can't do the math that much right now, maybe 10, 20, 30 times what we started off doing. Yeah, no, and the market is saying what you're doing. They like this concept of four season too. So, I mean, you know, when I think of, um, I haven't broken anything since high school sports. So I, I, and I remember I was from a small town. There wasn't much there. It was fairly simple. Uh, right. Today, you know, the tools, everything else, uh, the capital. I mean, what, what I'm seeing is, you know, so many, and I'm in Silicon Valley, so many of the physicians, you know, they're, they're really talented. We're losing a brain drain. They're retiring or they're going to the hospitals and, you know, working groups there. How can a group, you know, you know, initially you kind of by yourself and then as you're building it up, really attract the talent to compete with these larger organizations? Well, most, first of all, I, I want to recruit great doctors and we have great doctors. And the reason we're able to do that is you might have somebody that's a great orthopedic surgeon or any kind of various surgeons, John, but if they're not able to practice their skill to where they they love, which is going to be probably in the operating room or taking care of patients. So we can eliminate all the bureaucracy and all the paperwork that's making those 59 year old doctors or so forth. They're, they're all retiring right now. They say there's going to be a, a shortage of good providers of care. Like you say, you're worried about access. In, in a way, that, that is true because you have a lot of good folks wanting to retire right now because they're tired of the paperwork, the bureaucracy, and all the documentation. And a lot of the documentation is really just red tape that has nothing to do with providing good care for our patients. So if I can provide uh, an atmosphere or environment where our doctors get to be doctors, and that's what they do best, and that's what they love, me included, uh, then I can attract good doctors that provide good care so patients love it. And my doctors, I, I been very impressed. None of them are saying they want to retire. They're all optimistic about the future, even though healthcare in the future is uncertain, as we all know. Mm -hmm. But but we have a group of doctors that are optimistic because they just get to practice what they enjoy. So, so that's our major attraction for doctors, and the patients get to notice the, the benefit of that. Uh, and Pat, one of the things I wanted to share that right away, because you know some of the uh, listeners or viewers are going to question, and they're going to say, geez, John, you know, Pat's obviously a very talented, you know, entrepreneur in the healthcare. How does that work for me if I'm selling widgets or I'm in professional services? And the answer is what we all have is we're scaling up. We have a shortage of talent. We want the best talent working with us. And one of the key things is making it easy for them to practice their skills. And so often, I mean, the healthcare, you know, anything involved around the government can get bureaucracy and so on. The more you can isolate, you know, all those distractions and bring it into your entity and take care of it with people who are really good at that. And then let the technicians, those highly skilled individuals do well. I mean, that, this is universal, Pat. I mean, this isn't just healthcare. This is, you know, you and I are in uh, Dan Sullivan's strategic coach, we hear this over and over again, no matter what they're doing. Right. It, it's all familiar. I, sometimes I think your red tape is more than my red tape. And we're all in the same boat. So as entrepreneurs, we can come home at night energized because we didn't have to do all the things that drain us. So from other entrepreneurs to doctors and whoever you are, if you want to succeed, just do what you enjoy and have the right team around you. It's amazing 
how lucky I feel of having the right folks around us. We're able to do so much in healthcare, real estate, and I think in something I read about you, you're a serial entrepreneur, and unfortunately, I, I might represent that comment too. <laughs> when we're surrounded by the right folks around us and have appreciation for our team. It's amazing what our team can do. Yeah, no, I, I, you and I are alike on that, and I, you know, I, I get to do what I love doing because only for the only reason is I've got a great team. Well, you, you've got to get you, you're going to stand on the right side of the line and let them do their stuff, and you let the, you know, the practitioners in each area do it, and 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 you you've taken that, and we've seen so many other entrepreneurs, but I want to go come back to kind of the key takeaways as we're going into some of the lessons learned. You know, as you've been doing a, you know, a combination of strategic coach, you know, one of the things we both do is we think about thinking a lot in uh, strategic coach and, and you're building this business, you're scaling it up. What are some of the key lessons that you think, you know, your fellow entrepreneurs, no matter what industry they're in, can really benefit from? Well, I'll tell you, uh, one of the takeaways I got was one of my first classes in strategic coach. Uh, I, I met a, some, a guy named Bruce Burton in manufacturing. We're on our coffee break, and he says, uh, you know, Pat, my concepts in manufacturing should be pretty applicable to you even in healthcare." So I'm thinking, healthcare and manufacturing, are you kidding? But he recommended a book called The Goal by Eli Goldbreath, and it talks about the theory of constraints in your bottlenecks. So we apply that to our surgery center, to running two rooms efficiently, to having doctors see more patients in less time with less effort. It's and they're happier, so patients notice that happy interaction. So that that is probably one of the key moments for me. Uh, before Dan Sullivan, I had another coach named well, me, Brian. Before you go there, I want to go a little deeper in it. So tell me, so you know, I, I've had those same type things. I mean, you know, you and I will over a coffee break talking, and you know, there's a lot. Of, we're very esoteric businesses all over the place. You're talking to somebody selling, you know, a whole bunch of herbal medicine, and the next one is building fire trucks, and the next one is professional services, and you know, you kind of, you, you start thinking you don't have that many things in common, but, you know, business is business largely, and you got to deliver a great client experience. You got to have more people want to explore working with you. So how did, you know, that concept of manufacturing, you're saying some of the bottlenecks, what, how did you work through some of those issues, you know, that uh, Bruce was sharing with you to get very specific and, you know, breakthroughs in your business? So for instance, let's talk about an operating room. So sometimes you'll go to, surgeons will go to some hospitals or facilities, do a surgery that will probably take them, say, pretend it's 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it might be. Then they'll go sit in the doctor's lounge for about another hour when that room gets turned over, being unproductive. So what we took be more productive is that the surgeon, my time, or whoever surgeon it should be, should be the rate limiting step because our time is the one that's going to be most productive for that hospital, that surgery center. So what we did was we started, uh, and this was in a really innovative, now it's a little bit more common, but to run two operating rooms. So as soon as the surgeon gets done with this surgery, this surgery, the other patients are already being set up for the other one. And you may think it's running through a lot of patients, but it's actually much more efficient. Patients don't wait very long. They get better care, and there's less downtime for patients. So the surgeon is much more energized and productive because they're doing the surgery that they enjoy. No, it's, you know, it's, it's those type of things, taking a step back and examining, you know, how can we make it more effective you know, for the client, for our, you know, the, the cost of delivery, and a better experience as well. So what other things, you know, I mean, what other lessons learned? So something that I learned from somebody named Lee Brower is the difference between leverage and productivity. So some folks automatically think that's a financial term. So I've applied it in medicine, but I really applied it to a general business philosophy for me. I don't like to get into a business relationship if it takes a lot of effort and energy and so forth. So I take the term leverage, which I want to do more with less effort. So how I translate that in my business, and maybe it's applicable to other folks, is I 
I'm able to leverage mid-levels. In my case, it's nurse practitioners and physician assistants. In somebody else's case, it may be uh, somebody go get in the sale and their implementation team and their follow-through team takes that. So for me, we get a lot done with less effort because when I'm sitting there in the exam room with the patient, I don't have a computer in my hand. I might, I might have a pen, but I'm not even taking notes. I have a scribe there that's doing everything I do not enjoy, which is taking notes, uh, doing paperwork. I just get to listen to my patient. When they walk out, their prescriptions are sent to their pharmacy and all the orders for physical therapy or MRIs right up front for them. So for me, that, that allows me to do what I enjoy. So I, I call that leverage. I can get a lot more done with less effort because I surround myself with folks that do the things that I don't enjoy. And then the other key learning point for me is productivity, getting more done in less time. So whereas in your case or somebody else's case, if, a, if you have a producer, John, that wants to produce $500 an hour, so they make a million dollars an hour, for instance, they shouldn't be doing something that's 10 or $12 an hour. So I'll have, when I walk out of that exam room, I'll have four or five folks sitting there helping me get that patient through. So for another entrepreneur, it might be an, an assistant some for, that can do other things for you that is that is less, it costs less than what you want to produce. So I had a goal in my mind that I want to make X number of dollars, so I'm going to focus on tasks that are high value tasks that will produce those X number of dollars, if you will. So, I, so that allows me to be more productive by having not being penny wise and pound foolish. So surround yourself with the folks that can handle the things for you. Yeah, no, I, I want to go go into that a little bit more because I think that's, you know, I, actually I know that affects all of us as entrepreneurs. I'm going to do a personal, I'll, I'll stay in the healthcare first and then we'll go outside. But I had a, I won't say the name of the, the organization, but it was one of the best executive clinics here in uh, Silicon Valley. And I had one of the cardiologists was my general practitioner. He's about my age and he just uh, retired because he got so tired of the paperwork part and the, or now the computer part. And, the, you know, he's still teaching at a major university. So it's kind of like, why, you know, why would you let this talent go for really, you know, probably, I don't know what, what it costs 30 bucks an hour to have somebody just follow him around and do the, the, information if even that you know I, I don't know maybe more but you know, yeah I mean I'm going you know it's Silicon Valley so I'm going a higher number but it's it, it's but I mean it's it's to lose a talent that's worth thousands of dollars an hour uh, it just doesn't make sense and in and, and, and really in our businesses all of us as entrepreneurs I mean you know we have this opportunity to really think through I mean should we do it and you know, the answer is very, very few things you should do. You're not good at that many things. You know, whatever you, the Dan Sullivan calls it, unique ability, whatever you're good at, you should do. And everything else that needs to be done should be delegated either internally or externally. But, uh, you know, there's there's $1,000, $10,000 jobs, there's $1,000, there's $100, there's $10 an hour. You know, you've got to decide what you want to price yourself and then get that out. And this becomes even more, Pat, you know, it's not, you know, you and I are talking about kind of, you know, uh, individuals, but when you, you're building your organization, this is, you know, you've got a lot of docs working with you, you know, the ability to make them more effective through your leverage and productivity so that they're serving the right people. Well, you know, that's where you've got all these employees helping them along the way. Absolutely. And, and the byproducts of happy doctors is amazing. We have Diagnostic imaging, athletic training, physical therapy, we dispense some medication. So the byproducts of happy patients and happy doctors are just, love, right now, love and life, the byproducts of that is amazing. The culture and everybody around you is so much more positive. They're happy. I, I sit around with a bunch of doctors and, and most of them want to retire because they're tired of everything. But inside, I'm, I'm happy. I see all this turmoil and paperwork and bureaucracy is opportunity for me. I, I'm probably one of those guys that's just a, a delusional optimist or whatever, but I, I, see, I see a lot of potential out there right now that 
everyone else is scared and tired of all this and that. To me, if we have the right system, it's actually, I think we can really excel if we can take advantage of yeah, that. And I, I think everyone, you know, what all of us should do is ask ourselves, how could we take advantage of you know, kind of the mess that's going on in the world. And one of the things, Pat, I think you and I will always agree is there's always going to be more mess. We don't know where it's going to show up or disruptions. Right. And we do know there's going to be disruptive technology. We know there's going to be disruptive governments. There are going to be, you know, agencies. There's going to be outside forces beyond our control. And we can get so wrapped up on it that, you know, we become dysfunctional. We can't move forward or we can kind of embrace it and know that we're up for the challenge and then really create a home for other people so that we can really build some great businesses with value. And I mean, that's what you're doing. Right. And, and the value just goes on and on. It goes from the real estate side to a bunch of other things. The, the byproducts of our core healthcare, actually, it's hard for me to describe, but it leads to so many other areas. We have folks asking us now to help them open up their facilities and well, their surgery centers. And well, so let me forth. ask you, Pat, I mean, because you know, one of the things I'm a big believer, and I know you are too, is about execution. And, you know, it's one thing to have these concepts, you know, we're talking about and how we're going to become more, you know, leveraging the concepts and the productivity. You know, how are you making things happen within your group? So to give you a backdrop, I, so I started the practice in 2000. 2004, I, I fired my uncle and some relatives. I brought in a real chief operating officer who really hated the books against his arguing with him big time. I brought in a real CFO. So, John, to answer your question, it, none of that happened for years until I had the right team. I, I would come up with ideas, hey, let's do medication dispensing, let's do this, let's do that. Now we're a one-stop shop. but. It wasn't until we actually had the right team to implement it that, to me, is amazing. I'll give you an example. Right now, if I don't, if I don't put the brakes on something, it's magic. It just happens. Uh, the, the, our team can execute so quickly, we can outmaneuver almost all those disruptive things that come our way because of the right team. Now, this is, I mean, this is something that I think all of us as entrepreneurs have to think through is, you know, if you're frustrated and you've got clarity of vision, where you're going, you've got, you know, you've quantified the goals and you've got the overall strategy in place and you're not making it happen in the marketplace, you know, you're getting, you know, some positive feedback. You want to make sure you got the right team because you can move mountains with the right team. I mean, I, I just, I, I've worked you know, both with not the greatest team. I, I think I have the best team I've ever had in my life. And we keep on starting, you know, bigger and bolder initiatives and the marketplace is responding. And when it doesn't respond, we can pivot a bit and make it happen and, 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 and deliver great client experience as well as track not only uh, clients, but also uh, strategic relationships. And, it's, it, and it becomes, I mean, I, I want to go back to what you were talking about too. It becomes fun. I mean, this is, you know, business should be fun. I mean, you got to, you know, the, yeah, there's some work. It's not 100% fun every moment, but boy, you can have a lot of fun doing this. It's fun because, John, we're in the uh, people development business, right? We it, develop teams, we develop people, we help raise their game to where it, it's sort of counterintuitive, you think, as you get really big and you get bigger and you're doing this project, that project, that it's over consuming of your time, but it's actually. I found just the opposite. I have more freedom today doing much, getting much more done than I ever did, but having a nice, enjoyable conversation with you right now. It's, you know, we both can. We've got, you know, a very successful businesses that can have a conversation. We know our team uh, is really making things happen. Uh, Pat, tell me how you get, you know, I mean, let's take kind of the, the, uh, the physicians, and then you, I'm going to call it support team. And I don't want it, you know, the support team sometimes is more important than the talent. But they're, you know, everybody's delivering a lot of value. But maybe how do you bring, how do you attract to your organization, you know, the, these talented individuals across these different needs that you have? Well, first of all, I approach it with my own mindset that not that 
somebody coming on board is you're lucky to have a job. So I approach that I'm lucky to have you on our team. So what can I do to make this a good place for you? What can I do to uh, help you grow as a person, to help you accomplish your goals so I can accomplish my goals? So it's very important for me to make sure that everybody wins. Every employee wins, every doctor wins, physical therapist, nurse practitioner, physician assistant. There can never be a loser. So I think in our culture, uh, now that we've created our brand, uh, self-referrals from other employees and word of mouth, I get calls now from, forget about talent and doctors, but just from almost everybody who want to come join us, even from hours away, because after you have that reputation and that brand for just caring about others and caring about your employees, it really helps attract good talent. I was in uh, London Business School, John, not too long ago, and, and they talked about how some of the leading banks out there actually pay their employees less, uh, but retain them better because of the culture of appreciation of their employees and, and how happy they are. So folks will work for less for the right environment. But ideally, I like us to do so well that everybody gets paid top dollar, which for, for us, that's the case, and yet have a great quality of life. So for us, that, that's, that's pretty key, is appreciation, not that you're not lucky to have a job, it's we're lucky to have you. No, and, and the, the benefits on, you know, we go back to productivity, I, you know, some of the studies coming out of Harvard, Sean Acker uh, wrote the book, uh, Happiness Advantage, and I remember, you know, just a happy employee is 30% more productive, all other things being equal. And, you know, we, we, we don't think of that, you know, you know the, the, it, so many uh, entrepreneurs, I know there was a time when I made this mistake, you, you think you write the check and you're buying people's behavior and you can buy their behavior, okay? But, you know what, I want their whole everything, their body, their mind working and, you know, and if you're gonna create a four season experience, whether it's in healthcare, manufacturing, professional services, you need the whole, you know, you're the Ritz Carlton, you know, ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. You need that whole group. Right. You need them bought in. Well, and, and what, what are some of the stumbling blocks along the way, Pat? Because, I mean, obviously you've been building your business during, you know, all the healthcare changes. And, you know, they haven't stopped. The interpretations of what the rules are and where they may go, you know, it's uncertain. How do you deal with that? You know, I, 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 first of all, I just know, I, I can't predict what's going to happen in the future, so I, I don't try, but I, I try to have the foundation that we can be proactive or reactive, you will, to any change that comes our way. So first of all, I, I'm not predicting health care, but we set up the right people in place that can respond to any changes that we have to be. And it's hard to describe, but there's a lot of rules in health care as far as, uh, uh, what we call ancillary services that that may or may not become something that we can continue to do in the future like a doctor ordering physical therapy in their office for instance but we've set up uh, the ability to separate that out if we needed to with healthcare change um, I'm not exactly sure that's what you're asking no no about. that's that's I mean I, I think one of the things that we all have to do is we have to have flexible learning organizations and I know you have that it, and because you know we look at healthcare it's one sixth of the economy now my guess is there's going to be a need for orthopedic surgeons for a long time even with you know, we have friends like Peter Diamandis who are and all these tech guys you know maybe they're going to make new bones for us or something I don't know what it is right. they'll have the titanium bones or carbon fiber but you know chances are we're all going to need medical services for the the foreseeable future. Right, and, and medicine is fun. It's, we actually get to make money serving folks, so it's actually fun. You don't even have to, well, I'm, we're lucky. We get to help folks and fulfill a higher calling, and then some of the scorecard or finances, it's just, uh, it's, just on, it's on the back burner, really, when you just worry about it. For us, at least, we get well, to do what we enjoy. No, what I love, Pat, you guys deliver tremendous value. This is something, and you can see the results fairly quickly. And, you know, 
I love businesses. Businesses, you know, capital systems are set up. You do well by doing well by others. And, you know, it's, it's right. not just about making money by any means. It's if right. you can deliver value. I mean, we, you and I both, I'm sure, have friends that I know I do that you know, are focused on the money. And they're usually the least successful entrepreneurs over the long term because they don't build the culture. They, you know, they don't have the teams. They don't have the relationships with their clients, their customers, their patients. Let, let me go, I wanna go into the, uh, back to a segment here. And it's the, the book of the day. And you the book. let me pull it up here. And once you describe, cause we, you know, we went into the concept of manufacturing. We talked about the book, The Goal. I've got it up on the screen now, Pat. Why, why do you, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I, you can see on the screen cause I'm putting up my Amazon account. I bought it July 16 of 2010. I'm going to now go back and reread it after we talked about it. But tell me why, why this was so material to you. So now you make me go reread it too because it's <laughs> been a while. And a, and a lot of it is just intuitive. It's uh, Some folks, when they look back, we're a young practice. It's hard to describe. I'm, I'm the oldest guy in our group right now. And it's... We've done so much in a, such a short period of time because we I we did it efficiently. We didn't we didn't let those stumbling blocks slow us down. I I, I remember you asked this a little bit earlier. I, I still remember trying to do this in two thousand four, two thousand eight, trying to stay afloat. And but when you just keep charging ahead and being productive and efficient and trying to figure out how you can do things better and figure out what your bottlenecks are, which is the essence of the book, the goal. Uh, it, it was a lot. We can see a lot of patients in a lot less time. Our doctors can do a lot more surgeries with a lot less effort and time and get, get to go home and spend time with their families. A lot of the providers of healthcare nowadays are getting burned out because they have to take call, they have to bring their paperwork home. They said, Daddy came home tonight, but all he did was do his charts all night. I don't see my dad. I don't want to go into health care. And where are some other kids in our neighborhood? They said, we want to join a group like Pat's, for instance, because I, I see him home taking a jog at lunch or being home at five with his kids and family going to the show. So that book just helped me get our whole practice much more efficient. So it's not, you know, when I first started the practice, I thought I worked really, really hard when the first time ever we saw 25 patients a day. And I believe last year, I think we saw 60, 70, 80,000 patient visits. I, I can't even remember Let's what it see. is exactly now. You didn't create more days, right? I'm pretty uh, sure. We didn't create more days. It's actually less time, less effort, more patients, and happier patients. So, so the book can help, at least for me at least, it helped me be much more efficient productive to enjoy more time off more time with my family because I, I i love my patients but i don't want to sacrifice my family and and this newer generation growing up I, and that's where maybe some other entrepreneurs may have uh, uh some struggling blocks but the new younger generation growing up they don't feel the same thing that maybe you or i did it's they have to be bought in, they have to have freedom, they have to be able to exp express what's important to them. And the, and the job, it's not a 80 hour work week for them. It has to be, let, let, I, I still need my time off and my family. So the value system's different. Whereas in the older days, it's you work for the company, you take call, you work hard, uh, and maybe sacrifice your family. So in today's world, I'm trying to attract talent that what can I do to make your life better? How can I make it more uh, efficient for you? How can I get you to take the trips that you never got to be able to take, go out of the country, see this, see that? So what can I do for you? And yet I still need my business to run. So maybe there's a way to be more productive. So the book helped our group to be more productive, get more done in less time, figure out what our bottlenecks are so that all of our employees can go play, our docs can play, everybody. It's not just the doctors. We keep mentioning doctors, but it's the whole team that, that gets to enjoy a more relaxed atmosphere. It's more fun to come to work because it's not all about work. It's, it's play for them for the most part. Uh, and I, I, you know, 
Pat, I mean, I just, you've built a great organization and it's really a measure by, you know, the satisfaction of the patients as well as all the employees. And, and the only way it works is both. And, and this has been very powerful. Let me do the key takeaways uh, in this. I'm saying I got a whole bunch of notes here. This has been great. I mean, number one, you know, we talked about, you talked about the conversation with Bruce, the, the concept of manufacturing, of really being systemic and identifying those bottlenecks. And, and this is something we all should do. And, and the more successful we are, sometimes we let them go longer. And there's so much opportunity to improve, not only quality experience for our patients or our customers or our clients, but for our team and be much more effective in everything we do. Second thing, understanding the power of leverage and productivity as we examine all those systems and you know, what we're building and, and you know, getting more done with less effort, more done in less time. It's not trying to maximize the dollar, it's trying to maximize the experience and creating the most value so that you do well by doing so much value for your clients, customers, patients. The next is building an organization that attracts the talent. You know, that you should, I mean, if you're having a hard time finding people in today's marketplace, then you don't have the right organization. You've got to build a brand, a culture that is attracting the best of the best, or you're going to fall behind. And this is so, I mean, Pat's a great example of that. And, and the last, it's all about execution, is executing on this. And, and this is where bringing together the right ex, you know, the executive team, the leadership team, and working with them to implement these ideas. Pat, you have done a great job. Um, I'm going to recommend to everybody that they go to aesnation.com and see all the show links. Uh, matter of fact, what I want to do too, look, I didn't put up, so let me do this. I'm going to change and, you know, your company, the website, you know, a lot of times there's all kinds of resources. These are resources for the patients, but if you want to reach out to Pat you know, at, at, at MidAmerica uh, Orthopedics, you know, definitely he is an extremely talented entrepreneur. I'm sure any of the, the orthopedic surgeons uh, out there are going, oh, I gotta give this guy a call here. But in the meantime, Pat, I wanna thank you for your time. And then I wanna encourage everyone out there, life's all about execution. Take the information, you know, go through the transcript, mark up the key points, key takeaways on the show notes. You, know, you can put this into place with your team you can create the four season of your own business. Wish you the best of success. Your clients, your future clients, they're counting on you. Don't let them down. Exceptional, remarkable breakthroughs. AESNation.com.